we've had the opportunity to introduce a number of people in the gallery here today, people who've come from all over the world to BC to contribute their skills and their efforts to our province. These people came to Canada and to British Columbia because they believed in our strong education system, in our democratic system that would provide them with a fair chance to succeed. But we are letting them down. The federal government has cut funding for English language training at BC colleges and universities. Decades of excellence and experience in English language training are under threat. The consequences for students, current and future, have been as overwhelming as this government's response has been underwhelming. The note on Kwantlen Polytechnic University's website concerning English as a Second Language Training, a school where the Minister of Advanced Education himself served on the board, tells the entire story. And I quote, if you are a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident, we are not accepting applications. That outcome is not unique to Kwantlen, but is being implemented across the province following this absurd decision. And what has our provincial government done in response? Have they flown to Ottawa with distinguished graduates of BC English language training to demand that funding be preserved? Have they held press conferences with students and teachers in BC to insist that Ottawa not abandon them? Has the Minister of Advanced Education even gone to a single rally of students and teachers trying to save their programs? I am sorry to say that the answer to all of these questions is no. But it's not as if this government doesn't have a position on this issue. If you'd like to know their true position, you need only ask the federal government. On December 12th, the federal minister responsible for immigration said they were grateful for the support of the provincial government in cutting these very successful programs out of colleges and universities in BC. Quote, we've actually done it with the agreement of the provincial government. I've been working very closely with the member for Prince George Valmont on this transition. She supports it, the Premier supports it, the government supports it. The Premier supports it and the government endorses it. Have you ever heard anything so bizarre? A government that purports to represent the interests of tens of thousands of British Columbians who are first or second generation immigrants to BC, supports and endorses the elimination of free and low cost English language training in BC colleges and universities. I have brought to this house real stories of real students whose dreams have been or would be made real by the same programs whose end this government supports and endorses. Armando, who's in his early 30s, served for eight years in the Philippines with the armed forces. He came to BC to make a better life. Quote, I finished the ESL program at Camosun, and I'm now in the plumbing department and I'm doing well because of the ESL. That they trained me how to speak, how to communicate, how to absorb the culture in this country. In a month I'll be done and I'll do the job, I'll do the work that I like and I'm happy. I can imagine installing the sewer, storm drainage, installing those sprinkler, installing those water heaters for the comfort of people for this community and I'm so happy and blessed to do that. Sharon was brought here by her parents from China. Quote, I finished my English grade 12, but it wasn't good enough for the university and the college studies. If you cancel this program, I have nowhere to go. I cannot go back to my high school. I cannot go back to China. And I cannot take my program because my English is not good enough. So it's just like nowhere to go. Natalia from the Ukraine, quote, I have been living here for over five years. Maybe you know right now in Ukraine, not a good political situation. I have a degree in economics, and I worked as an economist, statistics, in the government. So I would like to continue work in my professional skills, but I understand I need to improve my academic English. I have been living here over five years, but I couldn't study here because I didn't have permanent resident. I only had a working visa. And every day I was thinking about when can I come and take professional academic English classes right now, Starting from since January, I took these classes, but I heard this bad news about the funding cut and I feel so disappointed because like this news cut my dream. How can this government endorse a plan that throws away decades of teaching experience in this area, decades of success for new Canadians and the dreams of new British Columbians who rely on these programs? How can making high quality English language training in BC universities and colleges available and affordable to new Canadians be a partisan issue. And if it's not a partisan issue, why is this government not working to defend these programs? I look forward, Honourable Speaker, to hear how this government justifies their silence on this issue.
Thank the member and recognize the member from Chilliwack. Well, thank you so much, Honourable Speaker. And on behalf of uh, my constituents in Chilliwack, uh, I'm pleased to rise in uh, response to the private member's statement regarding high quality training for British Columbians. Uh, Honourable Speaker, as a lifelong educator, this is a subject that uh, I'm extremely passionate about. I've, I've had the privilege over the last quarter century to have been teaching at the University of the Fraser Valley, uh, at Douglas College and the Vancouver Native Education Centre. And uh, simultaneously, uh, I have a passion for uh, the, the ed educational experience in this province. My entire education took place in British Columbia uh, at Fraser Valley College, Simon Fraser University, and Capilano College. Uh, so there's, there's few issues that are closer to my heart than this one. And I guess the reality is that in previous era, a previous era, it wasn't really necessary for a young person to seek out post-secondary education. There was a time where someone with grade 12, or maybe not even grade 12, could uh, find uh, work in one of the traditional uh, industries, forestry, mining, uh, the mills, fisheries, and such. And a young person could make a very good living and uh, start a family. On, uh, on that type of income. But we all know that has changed. Uh, we're not going to ever, we're not going to unring that bell at any point in time. Uh, British Columbia has diversified its economy, and as a consequence, our economy is much more stable than in previous times. In fact, one of the main reasons why we emerged from the 2008 global meltdown economic storm, better than most any other jurisdiction uh, anywhere, is that uh, this government had. Uh, taken the steps to diversify its economy. We recognize that the road to prosperity runs through this diversified economy, and that means high quality education for British Columbians. And young people realize this too. They know that a rewarding job requires skills and training that can only be acquired through quality post-secondary education. And that is precisely the reason why this government is making significant investments in skills training to ensure that British Columbians are first in line for the jobs of tomorrow. We therefore require a post-secondary education system that is adaptable, that is nimble, that is flexible enough that we can align it with the needs of employers and the province's future. So for example, to uh, just speak to a couple of specifics, we are making investments of over $500 million annually for labour market and training programs. We provide $100 million annually to support skilled trades and technical training through the Industry Training Authority. And we've done our part to keep education affordable by capping tuition increases at 2% uh, over the last uh, nine years. So consequently, right now, BC has the fourth lowest tuition rate in BC. Now, I know that the, for the opposition, this isn't enough. Uh, it's, it should, uh, any increase is too much. Uh, maybe we shouldn't have any tuition whatsoever. Uh, seems to be the mantra given the, uh, the economic uh, netherworld that uh, the opposition resides in. But let's, let's not forget it was an NDP government in the 90s that brought in the ill-advised and ill-fated tuition freeze of the 1990s. That failed policy had the brutal impact of starving post-secondary institutions of a much needed resource of income and inflicted long-term damage that took years and years to recover from. I was on the front line, Honourable Speaker, when that happened. I was teaching first and second year students when we didn't have the resources to deliver the quality of education that we were responsible for. When the NDP put that tuition freeze in place, there was no corresponding funding source to undo the damage caused by it. And we went through literally a generation where we had lacked the ability to deliver what British Columbians expected. But it was, a, it was a cheap political ploy. Uh, it was very crass. It, it ignored the economic realities of the day. Uh, it was uh, contrary to what every single uh, administrator in university and college management uh, thought would be prudent. Uh, so, but instead of benefiting students, it derived, deprived them of the opportunity to attend an institution with adequate resources to provide the high quality education they're entitled to. And it was ill-conceived policies like that blanket tuition freeze that would have prevented strategic investments such as the recent opening of the Agricultural Centre of Excellence at the University of the Fraser Valley. <laughs> Honourable Speaker, I just had the opportunity, I had the opportunity to tour this wonderful, magnificent facility with our Premier and my friend and colleague, the Right Honourable Member from Chilliwack Hope. And one could not be more impressed 
with the state-of-the-art facilities that will give our students the edge they need to succeed in the economy of tomorrow. I, I, I highly recommend the, uh, the, Thank you, the, member. the members opposite attend this facility and Thank see what happens when a government Thank that you, puts member. education and training first ahead of cheap Thank crass you. politics attend such a facility and see this magnificent structure. Thank this you, member. This is a facility that never, ever would member. have been created. Oh. Never member. would have been created under an NDP government. Thank you. Member from Vancouver Point Grey. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. It's clear that the member understands time limits about as well as he understands this issue. <laughs> it, it, uh, it's, it's clear based on the response that the member in this government has no idea what is happening in this province. We've got a gallery full of people here, Honourable Speaker, uh, who are here to hear about English as a second language programming, and I didn't even hear the member uh, use those words in his entire response. Uh, it, it's shocking, I, and to, to illustrate that these are real people with real issues and real concerns, not the 1990s, today, here in British Columbia, Two more quotes in my final two minutes. Hassam from Egypt. I have my degree in mechanical engineering, specialist in HVAC, air conditioning systems. I'm the father for three daughters and one son. I have a lot of experience from my ex-job and I want to transfer it here to my community to belong. I found the first difficulty I faced was my language. Therefore, I decided to obtain the courses I need to improve my skills in language and the first step to be in the community. It's not just language but also they teach us how to behave in the new country and the culture for the Canadians. And Linda from the Philippines. I've been in Canada for five years now. Right now I am doing elderly care, caring for an 86 years old woman. I work 12 hours a day, three and a half days a week, and I'm studying English right now. My goal is to be an LPN. I'd really like to be an LPN so I can continue my work as a medical professional. Now that makes me worry because I have to still do three English levels before I can do that. Honourable Speaker, these new British Columbians came here bringing unique connections to trading partners the world over. They came with high levels of skill. These students, the students with whom the Minister of Advanced Education in this province refuses to meet, the students whose programs elimination this government supports and endorses, consistently say the same thing. They came here because of the opportunities available in education because they believe that BC is a place that values education as a priority, as a major economic advantage. I call on this government to prove them right, to show that this government cares about their opportunities and their, pro their promise, to take up their cause with Ottawa and to demand the continuation of these programs. The end of these programs will prove to be a source of continuing embarrassment, a disincentive for talented immigrants interested in our province, and ultimately a cost for everyone in our province that will be paid for generations to come. Thank you, Honourable Speaker.